The main theme of this video is just like last video, right? Here's you, no coding experience, or maybe a little of coding experience. And you wanna use AI and less than 15 minutes of your time to create a website from scratch with your own domain that you choose, you buy, you use that domain for your website. This is what we're gonna talk about in this video. Over the last nine days, I've spent basically all day every day building websites in this format, using AI, just prompting AI to help me create different types of websites. We're gonna go over my five favorite sites that I've created. And then we're gonna go over the four step process in order to go uh, from you right here with no coding skills to creating a website with your own domain from scratch, right? So we're gonna start off with five examples, then I'm gonna go into my process, and then I'm gonna do an example. I'm gonna create a landing page right here in this video. It's gonna be sick. I started using AI to build websites about nine days ago. And in those nine days, I've created, I think, 11 different websites. Here are my favorite five. This is the only one that I've actually hooked up to my own domain. So this is my homepage that I created. Guess what? There's a little Easter egg on here. You can double tap on create.inc. It opens up to my prototypes. Only the real OGs will know where that is. One of those little tools on there is this thing called Mermaid Image. And what this allows you to do is on ChatGPT or Claude, you can ask it to generate mermaid code, whether that is a mind map, whether that is a timeline. So let's do a timeline. So this is the American Revolutionary War. And I just asked ChatGPT to generate this code. And boom, look at that immediate creation of this image. Oh, guess what? How do we download it? Just click on that button, right? Now go to your files, go to my files. Oh, there it is. Boom. American Revolutionary War. Look at the quality. You can also do mind maps. So you ask ChatGPT, or Claude to generate a mind map. And so this is just one I have saved from earlier. This is mind map that I created. And this is the code that ChatGPT gave me. And here is the chart. And it renders it out right here and you can actually make changes. We can click download mermaid chart as SVG and we can go into our files and check this out. Here it is, separated by color, starting a website for traffic conversation. And here we go. We have this clean mind map, any topic you want. Created that last night in 30 minutes, wasn't difficult. I created this app that organizes all of the Instagram videos by tag over the last few years that I've created. I can click on videos about image generation and then click on this month right here, click on the link and we get this video that I created on AI Photoshop. This was the notes app that I made in the last video. This is my code. This is the most recent deployment right here. And so I can add a new note and we can choose which category, but we can also just add a quick date. So let's say this is due on July 27th. We hit save right here. Look at this video about creating backend database. And so what separates that notes app from all of the other sites that I created was a backend, right? Because what Claude did incredibly well and what made it so much cooler than ChatGPT, in my opinion, was the fact that they created what's called Claude Artifact. And this allowed you to generate code. And on the side panel, many of you have probably used it, but it will render the front end of your code so you can actually interact with it. You can type into the little boxes, right? You can do all these different things. You can create animations and you can test it out, right? It allowed users to visualize the front end of a website and interact with it. But then that immediately caused me to crave even more because I'm like, wait, I want to hook this up to my own domain. Wait, I want to be able to store information in there. And so that drove me to learning how to do that. And so that was Replit, which allows you to deploy the code that you generate. So not only does it render it, it gives you code that you can then copy and paste into Replit. There are other tools that you can use for this. I just chose to use Replit because it was the first one that I saw that you can do it. And you can share this domain because you can deploy it, put it on the internet, share it with friends. You can share it with friends. You can also download other libraries. So there's only a certain amount of libraries. And if I had to define what a library is, I wouldn't know uh, at a first principle level like what a library is. But what I do know is that if you ever want to use a static CSV file as a backend, I need Papa Parse. I know that in order for me to use a CSV file as a backend where I can up to update the CSV file and that will automatically update the data in my website, I need to use Papa Parse. And that is a library, right? If I want to do mermaid diagrams, I need to use the mermaid library. Neither of those can be found in Claude Artifact. So if you move out of Artifact, you have access to more libraries. I also know that I can download other people's code, right? Just like GitHub, you can, on Replit, you can download other people's REPLs or fork their REPLs, which basically means duplicate. 
and then you can create your own project, you can edit it and stuff, which is cool and uh, something that I'll get to in the future. And there's also templates. So there's like a ChatGPT template where you, all you need to do is plug in your API token and then you can actually use ChatGPT in a web app and then you can actually change the code behind the scenes to match more of what you're trying to do. But with all of this, right, I created a notes app, my first notes app, put it on Twitter, people were talking shit. They're like, hey man, whenever you go there and you're just using the front end, if you hit the exit and then go back to the site, all of that data is gone. And I'm like, you know what? Good point. You're right. Let's figure that out. So then my last YouTube video, I spent four and a half hours trying to figure this out. And oh man, it was stressful. But once I figured it out, oh, it's one of the best feelings I've ever felt in my entire life. But backends basically allow you to like do stuff on the front end, right? Depending on what fields you fill out on the front end, it'll basically store it in a database. You can think of it like a Google Sheets or like a Notion database that stores all of the data that you do on the front end. One thing I don't know how to do is actually separate it by user, right? Because the reason I can't share my notes app is it's just basically one profile of this notes app. I don't know how to give a new user uh, a fresh database. And then once you deploy your website, it gives you a .replit domain. So it's like Riley's website .replit.app. And then you can just buy a domain. And so in my case, I went to Namecheap and bought create.inc. And then I set up that domain to basically point at your replit domain and this allows you to basically create a website with your own custom domain. In this video, we're actually gonna build a static web page and hook it up to a new domain. Let's build one of these landing pages with AI from scratch. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna buy the domain stuffednanas.com. So stuffednanas is ready. We're gonna quickly go to mid journey and we are gonna make sure that the aspect ratio is square here. And I'm going to go like this, go banana, stuffed animal product photo. Let's go minimal background and you can just hit rerun over and over and over and over and over and over. If you hold shift, you can just select, uh, let's go 24 of these. We're gonna download those now. Let's go like this. Let's get a cover photo. So we're gonna make the aspect ratio two by one. Mark Zuckerberg holding banana stuffed animal. See, now this one is just perfect. There's Mark holding a banana. And so now we have all the assets that we need. So now let's go ahead and we are going to create our website. Let's say that we want it to be two by one. Basically go like this. Headline. We're also going to add a little bit of text here. So let's just go ahead and use this. So we're going to use this. So we're going to upload this image right here to Claude and we're going to say create a landing page in React and uh, TSS, which is just the one that I've always done. And so I'm just going to stick with it. I'm going to find one that works and then I can move to other languages. And so this is a landing page for my stuff banana company called stuffnanas.com. I'm going to give you an outline, which is in the image. And I want you to put a placeholder image for each section and generate good copy. Uh, the copy on the photo, so like right here, the text on the photo, should be something that has to do with bananas and Mark Zuckerberg and be really ironic and funny. Let's go ahead and see what it does. I literally forgot that I am out of messages until 5 p.m. on Claude. We have a second Claude account because gotta make a video, you know? We are going to run this. And so here we go, here it is, and here is the site that it generated. So this is what it generated right here. It doesn't look super good at all, but it's okay. The only data we harvest is potassium, Mark Bananasberg. Oh my God, I'm keeping that in for sure. Remember, these are gonna be image placeholders. All you have to do is ask it to change it. Just go one, change the font to something more modern, and fun. Let's see what it does with these changes here. Make the copy on the top image smaller text and toward the bottom of the image. And let's just try that. All right, you know what? I think this is gonna look good. It even added like this like gradient below this. So I think if the image just kind of sits right in there, I think it's gonna look really good. Let's do this. So we are going to use Replit now. And this is a template. It's called Riley React Template Fin. 
I'm going to click on this up top here. I'm going to include the link to this. This is a public link. And I'm going to hit these three dots. I'm going to hit fork. And I'm going to hit uh, stuffednanas.com. And we are going to enter that in. And it should fork it and create a new REPL. What this includes is this index.html and this index.tsx. In theory, if you go to your Claude, in theory, if you go to Claude and you copy that code and you hit copy content, and then you go to your app.tsx file and paste in the code of the artifact, exactly, and then you hit run, it should in theory, it'll open up this web view. And so we can actually make this full screen here. And so it has this site and look at that. It even added this like nice format here. So once that loads, we can then focus on adding those images. Okay, I just uploaded this to Replit and am creating a landing page there. I also have, and I'm just gonna include that. I like to give it as much context as possible. So this is index.tsx. I'm just gonna put index.tsx and I'm going to paste the code right below it. And then I also have index.html. I'm gonna paste all this in here and I'm gonna paste this just so it has as much context as possible. And I'm gonna to come to the top. I have these two plus app dot, which is the code in previous artifact. I already have the images to put into place in this site. How do I get them into the right place? So the first thing we need to do is we need to create an images folder in the source directory and I'll explain what that means. And so it generated a bunch of snippets. And so if you've never coded before, it's annoying to do snippets. You can literally just say generate the full code for all of them. This will make you go through your credits a little bit faster. But now that I have um, two Claude accounts, that's fine. Uh, generate full code for all of them and tell me where I'm putting the code. And so then while it's doing that, we can actually begin to work on this part. So we need to create an image folder in the source directory. So this is a source directory is just a folder. We're gonna come up here, we're gonna hit these three dots. So we're gonna create an images folder. Okay, so here's the full code for app.tsx. And so we can copy this code and we're gonna to go to app.tsx. We're gonna paste this whole thing in. And we're gonna go back to this index.tsx. We're gonna, oops, we're gonna copy this paste it in. Uh, we're going to get this index.html apparently. Okay, so we can add that in source. We're going to come down to source. are going to add a file by this name right here. And then we are going to paste the code that it told us to paste in. For those of you who are wondering, I use uh, Raycast, which is an app that basically stores all the things that you copy. Um, and I think we've done everything that it told us to just do. Okay, here it says, make sure to place your images in this format right here. Because these are already all PNGs. Let's just ask Claude, can you make, make it so these can be PNGs? But likely it's just gonna have to change the name of this. Certainly we can change, so it's just gonna change the app.tsx file, basically pull from only PNGs, because they're already in PNGs. We're just gonna make those quick adjustments real quick, update the code with the PNGs in mind. Okay, so we got those updated, and the files should be organized like this. Okay, now we can organize the file. So now we're gonna organize the files like this in PNGs. And now we can. all we need to do is just change the names of the ones we wanna use, and then drag them into the images folder, right? And we've already created this image fold images folder banana two banana three i'm just going to drag all the ones we're not using into this file grab all of these images and we can open up our replit so i got this all moved over properly so within our source folder an image folder with this exact layout that you can then drag into this image file that I accidentally had as a document. So I just changed this to a folder and then drug them in here. So now we should 
after we have this, we should now be good, should be fully set up. Okay, so now what we can do here is we can actually run this. Let's see if it looks correct. There we go. We can make some more changes later. Let's try and deploy this. So we're gonna deploy it as a static, easy client-side app. So we're just gonna set up deployment. This doesn't really matter right now because we have our own domain. I'm sure, actually we could just take stuffnanas.com and we can just hit deploy. There we go. We have deployed this website, which we're gonna open up right now. Here it is. Mark Zuckerberg is cut off. So we need to make some changes. Let's go ahead. I'm gonna up upload this right here. So we have this image. Oh, we need to grab the dimensions here. Um, size the image that it fits. This is the size of the image. Okay, so it said to do the snippet. I'm feeling lazy, so I just said give me the full code. and I just wanna be able to copy it in without thinking because we're almost done. Let's see if it runs in the web view. Let's try and redeploy it with the new settings. So this is what it looks like before. It's super cut off. Now let's see it. Okay, there we go. The only data we harvest is potassium, Mark Bananasberg. And we created this right here. Obviously did this really quickly, just threw something together. I could remove this gradient, change some colors around, but the point is that we created stuffnanas.com. Actually, we have not created stuffnanas.com because what we need to do is we need to go back here and we need to go to deployments and we need to go to manage and we need to press link a domain and we're gonna type in stuffnanas.com and we're gonna go like this. And so we need to add these in as records. And remember, you can always ask Claude about this. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go like this. I'm gonna copy this whole section as the screenshot. And I'm going to copy this whole thing from Replit. This is gonna do is it'll give it the proper context it needs. We're gonna go back to Claude. We're gonna give it both of those images. I want to set up the domain to my GoDaddy domain. Here are the settings for each give me specific instruction as to how to do it. And we're going to paste this in here. And so it says we should edit the A record. So we're gonna hit edit. And for value, we're gonna put this right here, TTL 600 seconds or one hour. All right, that's fine. And we're gonna hit save and this text record is gonna be an at. And then we're also, we need to copy this whole record here. And so we need to paste this whole value in here. And for TTL, we're gonna put one hour. We're gonna hit save, updating DNS records, success. It takes a little bit longer. We'll see how long it takes. We go back here, we're gonna hit link domain. And now it's gonna take some time to verify. So by the time that this verifies, stuffnanas.com will now be this site right here. And any changes we make to this and then we redeploy it will automatically update stuffnanas.com. And now you have your own landing page that you just created in like seven or eight minutes that you can then create. You can plug it into any domain that you want. And I'll include that in the description. That's the exact process that I used for when I created create.inc. If you're just joining me now, I've been so motivated recently about how we're in an age where creation is possible, where the pace of innovation across creating web apps, as well as generating videos, images, and songs, and around the corner is a lot of 3D and motion tracking stuff and animation stuff, and I think it's all gonna come together into this multimedia world. I think all of these mediums are coming together and we're gonna be able to create cooler and cooler things. And so, I am creating create.inc. I have a general vision, but it's gonna require a lot of help and we're gonna create a movement. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we're gonna create a movement and it's gonna be a little bit different. I hope you guys join me. I'll talk to you guys later.